let's talk about this uh, this crazy article that I found. Nearest star cluster to Earth is being ripped apart by something massive we can't see. Now, at first glance, that's frightening. At second glance, that's frightening. <laughs> oh my gosh. Let's, let's read about it. New analysis of data from one of humanity's most powerful space observatories, Gaia, suggests that the nearest star cluster to Earth is being torn asunder by the phenomenal gravity of a massive object we cannot see. Wouldn't that be a black hole? No? Anyway, astronomer Teresa Jerebkova and her colleagues from the European Space Agency and the European Southern Observatory pored over the information contained in Gaia uh, Data Research 2.5, DR 2.5, and DR 3. The Gaia Space Observatory maps the Milky Way galaxy in three dimensions with the highest degree of details that current generation technology will allow, with a view of pinpointing the position and uh, velocity data as many stars as possible. Following detailed analysis of this raw data, the researchers noticed something peculiar about the spherical star cluster uh, Hades. I don't know if it's Hades or I think it's I'm just going to call it Hades. I think it is located some 150 light years away from the in the constellation Taurus. Recognizing some weird findings in the data, the team expanded their search parameters to catch previously overlooked stars and found hundreds of new stars. Dense star clusters naturally rip apart over time due to gravitational forces, both internally and with the gravity exerted by the galaxies around them, which can often transform a cluster into what is known as a tidal stream, a long band of stars. In Hades' case, the central cluster measures some 60 light years across, while the tidal tail stretches out over thousands of light years. Now, this is a beautiful image of exactly this. Check this out. I'm just going to play it here. Is it playing? It is. It's slow. Is, is it playing? There we go. Okay. Check this out. So there's uh, the constellation in Taurus. And then we see all the constellations here. Now this is where it gets good. Of course, it's rather slow about it. Okay, gets rid of the, the constellations. Now we see the raw stars. Okay, now you can see the uh, the tide, as the, the, the tidal stream. Now this is where it gets really good. Now it's in 3D. Now we're take we're floating back to see the Milky Way as a whole. All right, so you can see how far this it's a big chunk of the Milky Way, right? Look at that. All of that. We're halfway through this. This is amazing. Let's skip for it a little bit. Oh no, this is a cool part. Look at this. So now it's we're giving a different perspective of the tidal stream of stars. Or the tidal tails, I guess they're calling it. Look at that. It's beautiful. There's the center of the Milky Way. There's no sound, by the way. So you're not missing anything. Okay, so that's from the European Space Agency. When the researchers ran simulations to explain the stellar dis uh, distribution with within the tail, they found more stars than are actually visible to mankind's instruments, meaning some had gone missing. The team then ran repeated simulations to try to figure out what had caused these stars to go AWOL. And the best theory that they devised was that a close encounter with an object measuring roughly 10 million times the mass of the sun might explain the odd scattering of stars. Astronomers are already theorizing that it may have been a close encounter with a large accumulation or a clump of dark matter. There must have been a close interaction with this really massive clump. And the Hades just got smashed, Jerobkova said. The dark matter hypothesis is, as always, tricky as humanity cannot directly detect dark matter and can instead only infer its existence and position by observing its influence on the universe around it. 
Despite this, best estimates suggest that dark matter may, in fact, make up roughly 80% of the universe. Dark matter clumps suspected of being the drivers behind galaxy formation are indeed theorized to still exist today in the form of dark halos, which encompass entire galaxies. Within the structure of these halos, astronomers predict the existence of dark matter subhalos, which may be responsible for the unusual ripping apart of Hades. And then there's a quote here. It says, with Gaia, the way we see the Milky Way has completely changed from Jerovkova. And with these discoveries, we will be able to map the Milky Way's substructures much better than ever before. I am so excited about life it, in the future. We are uh, on the verge of space travel. I, you know what? I didn't even check uh, SpaceX SN11 today. Did they launch today? They were actually supposed to launch. Okay, I don't think they did yet. Um, yeah, yeah. It, did, they delayed the the launch today. I guess that it was scrubbed it was scrubbed last week as well and it continues to be scrubbed but they're on the they're on the verge man and i think the uh, sn11 is going to i think it's going to land and it's going to be part of this future that we're going to be we're going to be moving into space so i'm hyped on it i don't know about you but i am very excited about it very much so